Last thing you want is to show to the Canadian government, well, all of my business has been developed in, in Vietnam, yeah. and now please give me the PR and I will move my company in Canada. Yeah. That doesn't really work like this. Um, hello everyone, today we have Mr. Uh, Nicholas, uh, President of Antenna International, uh, our partner in SUV program. So, uh, Nicholas, can you uh, introduce a bit about yourself? Well, thank you, Annie, for inviting me today. Uh, basically, I'm a Canadian lawyer. I've been involved in business migration for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. And at Eterna, our, our team have helped uh, nearly 3,000 families to migrate to Canada through different uh, investor and business uh, immigration programs and uh, today we are here to talk about the startup visa program, uh, the changes that took place recently and answer some of the questions that your client have been asking you in the last few weeks. Okay, um, so uh, since you have been a long experience in immigration sector, so uh, can you tell some point that why SUV now is a very good uh, program for investor? What I really like about SUV recently is that the government has made uh, a reform on the program at the end of the month of April to basically make sure that the intake of application would be of higher quality, right? So since uh, the end of April, now there's a, a quota system. Mm -hmm. So each designated organization can only accept up to 10 companies to be supported per year. Mm -hmm. so as a result, uh, you have a designated organization they used to accept hundreds and hundreds of applicants that can only be limited to 50 applicants per year. Mm. Okay, so what that change make like, you know, uh, you think is good for the investor right now? Right. Uh, I believe that the government has made that decision to increase the quality of the application. So before they were not sure, you would see designated organization that would accept up to 800 applicants per year mm. and they would wonder how can this incubator, for instance, make a good job in assessing all of these businesses. So now by limiting the amount of application, they want to make sure that the designated organization are choosing the best companies. Mm. So the bar of entry, uh, I believe, has been lifted up. Now, uh, the designated organization, should it be the VC or the incubator, will be looking for companies that have uh, maybe more development up front, mm. that have been uh, proving more traction mm. uh, in terms of their technology, mm. in terms of the development of the market. So I think it's, it's positive for the mm. program because it will make sure that the government will be accepting higher quality program. Okay, so in general that uh, that is a very improvement from uh, government side yeah. to be sure that this uh, project is uh, like valuable for the uh, uh, investor also for the Canada, right? That's right. Yeah, so um, let's talk about like the service of antenna mm -hmm. in this uh, program. So what is you think that is the most uh, significant difference between antenna and others? company on the market? But I think it's the process by which we are selecting our our client's company. Mm. Uh, so we are working with designated organization that have put the bar very high mm. when selecting their clients. So designated organization we are working with uh, will not accept companies purely based on business plan. Mm. So when it's time for our team to assess the company of our clients, we are making sure that those companies have uh, a developed technology. Mm. Uh, we are making sure that this company uh, is really innovative, that it's not purely, let's say, a uh, mobile app or stuff like that. So, because this is requirement from the designated organization. Mm. So, um, I think it starts with the selection. Mm. That's really the first step. Uh, mm. And after that, it's uh, making sure that our clients get um, all the information to be able to uh, to develop their business uh, in a way uh, that will benefit Canada mm. and in a way that will be uh, qualifying for the program, mm. right? So when you're talking about developing the business, you're talking about um, where are you developing your business? Are you developing it in Vietnam, mm. with Vietnam suppliers, mm. for Vietnam clients, mm. or you are really focusing on Canada? Mm. And I think the Canadian government is looking for this mm. and this is where uh, in the course of the application 
we will always remind our clients to really put their focus on Canada because this is yeah. what the Canadian government wants. Yeah. At the end of the day, they want to attract startups, innovative startups that will benefit Canadians. Yeah, so I think that is one of the very uh, important point that uh, from the government side, when they create the program, they want to uh, recruit like uh, entrepreneurship, first of all, and second of all, like uh, they need to show some benefit for um, economic of Canada. So uh, I believe that you uh, like your team use all the vendors or product developer and things like that most uh, from inside Canada is that right? But that's that's a key aspect of, of uh, the service that we provide. Uh, our clients are uh, mostly foreigners with limited experience in Canada. Yes. Uh, so when it's time to develop their startups, uh, they have the choice. The mm. natural choice will be to go toward vendors or service providers that are located in your home, in their home country, yeah. Vietnam. Mm. Uh, but it's important for their company to develop from within Canada. Yeah. So that involves many aspects. And one of the aspects is, well, instead of hiring the software developer in, mm. in Ho Chi Minh City, yeah. why don't you look for a good one in Canada? There are yeah. plenty of ones. So this is where we will help them, uh, along with the designated organization as well, to bring the client to to hire those uh, Canadian vendors. Mm. Uh, that's absolutely something important. Mm. The last thing you want is to show to the Canadian government, well, all of my business has been developed in, in Vietnam, yeah. and now please give me the PR and I will move my company in Canada. Yeah. That doesn't really work like this. In addition that nowadays actually that to Canada government, that some of like document things from other country out of Canada is not really creditable. Mm -hmm. And some of the program they use a third party auditing. So I think that using the vendor within Canada is could be, you know, is one of the uh, benefit for the investor within even like along the way when we provide the document to show the activity of the, the, the business in Canada. But yeah, there's the immigration process. Yeah. That's one aspect for sure. But beyond the immigration process, what you are looking for is the success of the startup. Right? Yeah. So we're talking about innovative entrepreneurs that mm. have great ideas that have been supported by either incubator, VC or Andro. Yeah. And what you want to make sure is that those companies will succeed in Canada. Yeah. So I believe and our team believes that the successful startups will be those who will quickly start uh, liaising with Canadian partners, will start organizing activities within Canada mm. to develop their company in Canada. Yeah. So I think this is going to be one of the key of the success. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and how, how about like you was mentioning about like a lot of uh, product of uh, startup uh, company now is like mobile apps and things like that. So, what do you think is could be like you know the strong product uh, perspective from the government side? Again, I believe. Uh, I hope I'm not repeating myself. I think yeah. the focus has to be Canada. Mm. So the product that the entrepreneur must bring benefit to Canada mm. and must make sense to be developed in Canada. Yeah. Right? Um, so not all the product makes sense in Canada. We see a lot of. Uh, of mobile app that are very amazing and that can generate a lot of revenue in Vietnam yeah. but makes no sense in Canada. For instance, if you are the developer of Zalo, right? yeah. it makes a lot of sense in Vietnam but you will not be able to compete within the Canadian environment. So yeah. uh, it's important for the startup entrepreneurs to really have proper advice mm. to be able to make their business successful in Canada. Okay, got it. Um, so. Um, I mean that now seeing the quota apply, uh, so uh, Antenna is uh, how confident you are in the uh, like secure the slot for investor within the year and the timing of the LOS? Well, uh, we have developed a relationship with designated organization. At the end of the day, the designated organization has this final word mm. to decide to support or not a project. Yeah. Uh, but we have the experience of dealing with, with them. Mm. We understand their requirement. And I think the key for us in order to have a smooth process with the designated organization is to put the bar higher when it comes to the selection of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the companies that we are supporting. So we're talking about companies that can prove 
uh, existing technology uh, that can prove uh, some traction when it comes to the market. Then when our clients are pitching those ideas to the venture capital or to the incubator, uh, they show something tangible. Mm. They, don't, they don't present themselves purely with a business plan. Yeah. They present themselves with a the product and development, mm. but pretty well advanced, right? Yeah. So that's, I think, one of the key. And the other key is in order to, to, to and this is more for the client side, yeah. is to be able to provide um, a standard procedure so that the client know what to expect mm. from the very beginning of the process. There's no, there's not much surprise yeah. when, when dealing with us because we've done, we've dealt with this organization quite a bit. Okay. And uh, the last part I want to ask you is, uh, you know, that Recently, that uh, SUV in Vietnam is a bit of chaos. Right. That when our client come to a uh, different uh, place to get the different information, and when they get back to us, is kind of like you know, it's many uh, different things out there. Um, so I just want. Uh, you as a very experienced in immigration, as a lawyer and things. So, what kind of question the investor should ask wherever the agent they come to meet to find out what is really important for them to care, uh, which is like effect most on their success of uh, immigration and investment. I, I think uh, the timeline mm. is very important. A lot of companies will be providing the startup visa, promising quotas. They don't, and they, like, we don't have control. They don't have control over yeah. the quota, but they are coming out promising quota without being able to properly explain the procedure leading to the level of support. Yeah. So the first question the client should ask is how uh, confident uh, the service provider is to bring the client to the finish line. Okay. And if this provider is not able to get the level of support. Is there any uh, any non-refundable fees mm. attached to that? Say you are signing with, with a company and there's no designated organization that can support your mm. company. Well, how much money will you get back? Mm. You know? uh, so this is this is an important aspect. Same thing if ever, God forbid, the uh, Canadian government refuses your application, mm. how much money uh, will be paid back to you? So mm. that's the money part, right? Yeah. Then the service part. Mm. Um, how long will you, the company uh, accompany you? Right? Uh, we have noticed over the years that startup entrepreneurs have questions all the way uh, mm. into the process, even after they get the PR. Mm. So it's important for them to work with a company that will accompany them mm. until the very end of the process and sometimes beyond yeah. uh, the permanent residency. What you want to avoid is uh, companies that are and not very clear about mm. what they will do after they get the letter of support. Mm. The letter of support for a startup entrepreneur is the beginning of the process. Mm. It's not the end of the process. So the second question should be that, and you should be able to be very clear in the contract that you sign with your service provider. Mm. You have the money aspect, yeah. you have the service aspect. But that is very important to look at. Yeah, because I, I believe that a startup visa is like the program uh, government uh, issue uh, is have two parts is really uh, clear that one is like startup part which is the business part and the second is immigration is like they need to be along together and they need to be active yeah. and you need to prove very strong for to the government that you are really you know uh, run it and that company and the business have the economic effect to Canada. But the government is very clear about that. Mm. What they want to avoid is clients who are basically only looking for immigration. Yeah. They don't care about the business part. Yeah. They go see companies, they buy a business plan, and they yeah. apply for immigration. Right? Yeah. This is what they absolutely uh, want to uh, basically crack down on. Mm. They really want to attract genuine entrepreneurs mm. and you're right one of the conditions is to prove progress and to prove active involvement of the client yeah so one aspect that clients should also look at is how active will i be in mm. the process if you are being promised by your consultant or your service provider don't worry just pay money and you will be passive then that should raise red flag because yeah. this is not what the government wants and this is not what you should want either. Yeah. Right? You should be active to successfully develop your business from within Canada. Yeah, okay. Um, so that is most of the thing that uh, 
uh, we received from the client uh, during the last few weeks. So thanks for your uh, time and thanks for your um, information. And it could help us to get more clear to work with the client to make them confident on the way uh, to move their family to Canada. Good. Well, thank okay. you very much, Annie. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you.